A GTA game set in Tokyo. A GTA game set in Germany. A GTA game set in Colombia. A GTA game on Mars. Yes, the planet. And even a GTA game with Godzilla. No, I am not making that up. These are all some of the lost and forgotten and unreleased GTA games that you probably never knew existed. And in today's video, I wanted to go over these 14 games that were never made just to have the thought of what could have been if things were different. Now, as many people know, the Grand Theft Auto series has primarily stayed in a few locations. I mean, GTA 1, for instance, it is actually what started it all. It took place in Liberty City, San Andreas, and Vice City. And those are the three main locations. We have visited these locations a number of times, and obviously in GTA 6, we are going back to Vice City again. Now, when GTA 7 comes out, are we going to revisit Liberty City again, or are we gonna get a new location well, we'll have to find out in about 25 years. But where this is all coming from was this really, really awesome article, and I will for sure link it in the uh, description below. This guy put together a list of the Grand Theft Auto games, ports, and expansions we never got to play. And here's actually the list of all 14. Uh, we're gonna go sort of one by one. Some of these will not take too much time on because there's some weird stuff happening here. A lot of this, as you'll see, is definitely from like early 2000s, like the early, early days of Rockstar. But we do have some recent things down here at the bottom, which we'll touch on for sure. Now, before we do look at the unreleased games that Rockstar were trying to make, I actually want to look at the released games, the games that actually came out. Of course, it did all start with the original Grand Theft Auto in 1997. This is the one, like I showed, had all three cities, Liberty City, San Andreas, and Vice City. After that, we actually went to London. We had Grand Theft Auto London 1969, and then we had Grand Theft Auto London 1961. I believe this is like the only time Rockstar went out of the US. After that, we had Grand Theft Auto 2. Then we had Grand Theft Auto 3. Then, of course, Vice City. One game that... I didn't know of, and I'm sure many people didn't know of, Grand Theft Auto Advanced. This was a GTA game made for the Game Boy Advanced, and uh, you can just see the stars. It was not a good game. After that, though, we had, of course, San Andreas, and then things get a little normal. I'm sure most people know what happens after San Andreas. You had Vice City Stories, then you had GTA 4, then you had the Lost in the Damned, the DLC for GTA 4, the Ballad of Gay Tony, another DLC for that game. We had Chinatown Wars, then Grand Theft Auto 5, and then now upcoming next year, Grand Theft Auto 6. But as we can see from this list, we have actually 14 Grand Theft Auto-esque games that were never released. The first one we have here is called Race and Chase, and this is actually what Grand Theft Auto was before it was Grand Theft Auto. You can see from this picture here, I guess this is maybe a picture of what it was supposed to look like. This particular game, it says, included a cannonball run, which is like an A to B race across the city, a demolition derby, which is a free roam where the winner is the person to wreck the most uh, cars or survive the longest, as well as two different bank robbery modes. One that you play as a getaway driver and you must evade the cops, and the other is actually where you control the police and you must stop the robbers from escaping. So that was this original race and chase game, but they added more and it eventually became the original Grand Theft Auto. Now I did say uh, we're gonna skip a few of these or not really talk about them too much. If you wanna read a lot about this, again, link to the article will be in the description, but they were trying to make a Nintendo 64 GTA game as well as a Sega Saturn GTA game. If you're a younger, viewer you probably don't even know what these consoles are that's how old they are but these were some games that, you know back in the day i guess they were just trying to broaden their horizons these were big consoles at the time so they were just trying to get their games out on more stuff there apparently was supposed to be a gta 1.5 which was sort of like a, a remaster or a dlc of gta 1 and that's what an ex rockstar developer actually said it was just basically going to be a remake of one because one was apparently a mess uh, he said 
The first one was manky as F and really needed fixing. This was at the time when Take Two actually purchased Rockstar and they bought the rights to Grand Theft Auto. So instead of making this like remaster, they basically just made the sequel. Another one we're going to sort of glance over because I don't think it's that interesting is a GTA 2 Nintendo 64 copy. This was actually in uh, this picture somewhere. Grand Theft Auto 2, it was supposed to come out on Nintendo 64 as well as the Game Boy Color. Those, of course, did get scrapped. Here we have one, though, that is pretty interesting. They were going to make a GTA 2 Berlin game. And this would have been an expansion pack, so basically just DLC for GTA 2. I guess similar to how the London games were expansion packs for GTA 1. And this one was relatively serious, apparently. It was in a couple of German magazines in 1999. It was also mentioned in an SEC filing. And it would have been set in the 80s, which was before the fall of the Berlin Wall. It would have also featured a period-appropriate soundtrack. Someone who actually was working on this project commented and said there was an idea uh, to create an expansion within Berlin's districts for GTA. The plan included underground rides through the expanse of Berlin, as well as visits to the Berlin Radio Tower. And of course, everything with the German car brands. The reason this game never actually got released, though, was because of this right here. This was a quote from someone who was working at Rockstar at the time. Basically, after Take-Two purchased the GTA rights, they wanted to branch it out. They wanted to make more games. And I guess the main developers basically just said, F off. We're, we're not doing that. That's going to require entirely too much work and, and resources. And we're trying to make these other games, which that's what ended up happening. Now, here we have another one that is just absolutely crazy. GTA 2000. Now, it says this was going to be a mission pack. So I, I guess not a full fledged game. But only a few years ago, someone who actually worked on this project gave us this tidbit of information. Rockstar Toronto was working on a mission pack for a magazine cover disc called GTA 2000. He didn't see what it was about, but this artist made a graphic for a space shuttle ruin on Mars that was to be used in the game. So he assumes it took place on Mars. Unfortunately, it got canceled before much was actually done. But what a crazy game that was canceled. A GTA game on Mars. How would that even work? I don't have any idea. We have another really interesting thing here, and this was back in 1999. A GTA Online Crime World game was in development. So GTA Online was already in development back basically in the early 2000s, late 1990s. Obviously much different than what we have now. But at the time, they were currently developing a multiplayer online version of Grand Theft Auto. This was also mentioned in a couple of magazines back in the day, such as GameSpot, uh, PC Zone, apparently. Not much is known about this. Like, we didn't know if it was going to be a 2D or a 3D game. Apparently, it was supposed to be a subscription-based high-speed multiplayer online game for those with a broadband connection. Ultimately, though, this idea went nowhere, probably because it was just too early for anything like this. But it is interesting how they had a GTA Online idea even back then. Apparently, this was going to be sort of a GTA MMO, or maybe this GTA MMO was something separate. But again, they say it was just in the works at one point, just nothing came about. So they wanted to have an online GTA game in early 2000, and we actually didn't get the online portion of GTA until GTA 4 in 2008. So it actually took them quite a bit before they reintroduced online multiplayer to the series. But what a strange thing. Like we obviously have GTA Online now. It's this massive thing. They wanted to have their own GTA Online, you know, MMO game back in the early 2000s. Here we have just another absolutely bonkers one. Godzilla takes Manhattan. This was going to be somewhat of a GTA 3 expansion, I guess. Or I guess reading through this, actually, the development of this Godzilla Takes Manhattan game eventually became GTA 3. So it says prior to GTA 3's development for the PS2, the project initially started as a demo for the Dreamcast, another super old console. And the producer at the time called this game Grand Theft Auto 
Godzilla Takes America. So we had an idea for a GTA game on Mars, and now we have an idea for a GTA game with Godzilla. Things were just crazy back in the day, apparently. So they were actually making a an open world sort of city in the development process. Uh, and it was going to be a city full of vehicles. You could see the cars whizzing around in 3D with the beautiful lights and full deformation of the car bodies. And apparently they thought that wasn't enough. So someone recommended they turn it into a kaiju themed project. From this paragraph here, it sounds like you were actually in control of like this Godzilla-esque creature. One trigger would control the neck, the other the jaw. A couple of gameplay systems had you defending or rescuing eggs. You could pick up people and carry them as hostages. This is just a crazy sounding game. You stomped around, you'd eat people, and you'd grow, and you'd destroy even more things. And the only reason we never got this game, and this is kind of a sad thing, because this would have just been such a crazy game back in the day. Such a fun game, probably. But this was at the time when Take-Two bought this development team, apparently for only $1. And they brought a number of sweeping changes to the studio. And instead of making this Godzilla game, they basically just took the city and all the technology they used, and that eventually became GTA 3. Now, at the same time as this Godzilla takes on America GTA game, there was going to be another GTA game called GTA 2.5 or GTA Miami. Now, the reason it was called 2.5 was because it wasn't actually 2D and it also wasn't 3D. It was kind of in between. Uh, one of the developers working on it said it was basically the Sim City perspective, if you've ever played those games. And out of all of these projects that we're mentioning, apparently this one was the one that came the closest to actually releasing. It also, though, was canceled when, I guess, Take-Two purchased this dev team. And I guess they were made to make GTA 3 instead. The good news, though, for these developers, after GTA 3, this same team would go on to release Grand Theft Auto Vice City, which is, of course, the Miami City, so... It was at least good for these developers that probably worked a bit to make that GTA Miami game. They eventually kind of went back to it with Vice City. Then we have these three games, which they just sound so freaking cool. A GTA Tokyo game, a GTA Bogota game, which is in Colombia, and a GTA Sin City game, which of course is Las Vegas. This was in 2003, before San Andreas was released, so I guess at that time... There was just a lot of ideas, and as we all know, this GTA Sin City game probably was just added to San Andreas. And even though this was all back in 2003, apparently in the leak of the GTA 5 source code, I think it was last year, people, data miners, I guess, actually found evidence of Grand Theft Auto Tokyo at one point in being development for the PS2. And before we read any more, just a quick side note, what a crazy timeline that would have been if we went from Vice City to then Grand Theft Auto Tokyo. How things would have been just probably so much different for the GTA franchise. Obviously, they went San Andreas, and then it was a never-ending cycle of just repeating the same cities over and over again. But if they did go to Tokyo, I wonder how much different GTA would look, because maybe it wouldn't just be constrained to the US. Ultimately, though, it was logistics that was the reason this never was made. Sam Hauser actually was traveling to Tokyo and he thought it would be an interesting city to make a GTA game in, but yeah, it just came down to logistics. Getting the research team out there long enough to map the city and getting the, uh, you know, the cultural satire, which Rockstar loves to do, it just didn't work or they couldn't get it done. So that's why they just stuck with the cities that were introduced with the original Grand Theft Auto. These next two are about that Game Boy Advanced edition of the game. Uh, and I'm not going to really talk too much about them because I don't think they're that interesting. But there was apparently this one dev team trying to make it that got canceled. Then another dev team tried to make it. And, uh, it just was a whole big thing. Again, if you want to read through all this, because there's a, de a decent amount here. Uh, click the link in the description. You can check it out. But it's, I don't know, I didn't think it was that interesting what is interesting, though, are the single player expansions for GTA 5 that we never got. Now, I have covered these a few times over the last year or so because we did only learn about these recently. 
I think this might have been the biggest like what if or, or what could have been for GTA. Back in 2013, Rockstar, they wanted to introduce more single player content, right? They had a Newswire post where they mentioned stay tuned for, you know, single player content DLCs in the next you know year or two. That all got cut. They all went to GTA Online because GTA Online was making them like billions of dollars. They said Michael Franklin and Trevor's action mayhem unexpected adventures would continue, but we all know that was a lie. And if you're ever wondering why they didn't happen, the uh, Imran Sarwar, who was like one of the higher ups at Rockstar, basically said that because the development teams was both focused on GTA Online and RDR2 at the time, there was just no one to make the single player content. But because of that GTA source code leak last year, we actually got some insight on these DLCs. One of them was going to be an Agent Trevor DLC, where Trevor basically saves the world. The Doomsday Heist in GTA Online was basically cut from this Trevor DLC. So I guess instead of our online characters, it would have been Trevor doing that. There was also going to be a Zombie Apocalypse DLC, probably like Undead Nightmare from RDR1 as well as an Alien Invasion DLC, which I don't know how that would have worked, but probably would have been pretty cool. Unfortunately, though, we don't have a whole lot of information on these DLCs. I mean, apart from the few lines of cut code in the source code that was leaked, I don't think a Rockstar developer has really ever come out and given us much information on these cut DLCs. I mean, really the only thing that was said was by uh, the Steven Ogg, the guy who plays Trevor, he says that Trevor was going to be a secret agent and he would have saved the world, basically. And then the final game that was mentioned actually recently, but was never released. And maybe it's still projected to be released at some point. Maybe it'll be like a GTA 6 pre-order bonus, but a GTA San Andreas VR game. This was stated by Mark Zuckerberg back in 2021 at some conference or something. But he said they were trying to make a GTA San Andreas VR game for their whatever VR thing at the time. It's been three years, though, and nothing, you know, has come about. So those were all of the unreleased, lost and forgotten GTA games that never got to see the light of day. And I do think it is somewhat interesting to look at this list and see the ideas that were originally had at Rockstar and to think, you know, what will GTA 7 be like? Obviously, we don't even have GTA 6. GTA 7 is not going to be out until literally like 15 years from now, probably. But what will it be? Is Rockstar going to go back to the same old cities we've been to multiple times? Like, are they going to go back to Liberty City and just make it bigger than ever? Or are they going to actually expand to other parts of the world or even just other parts of the U.S.? Obviously, the U.S. is perfect for a GTA game with like the car culture, the gun culture, all the satire you could do. Rockstar knows all of that sort of stuff. Where if you went to another country, you don't have some of that stuff. Like, it'd be a little weird if you're running around GTA Tokyo with a crazy amount of weapons. I'm not saying it couldn't be done, but it would be a little weird. It wouldn't really feel like a GTA game, in my opinion. Obviously, there's the Yakuza games. I think Sleeping Dogs a couple years ago came out. That was in China, Hong Kong, I believe. Those are GTA-esque, but there is something special about the GTA games, of course, taking place in America. But I will just pose that question. Like, would you be willing to see other countries in a GTA title? And if so, what countries would you want a GTA game to be in? And also, I guess, what cities in America? Like, if they just keep it in America and they go somewhere new, what other cities would you like to see? Anyway, that is going to do it for this GTA video. Like I've been saying for a few weeks now, we were still waiting for something GTA 6 related from Rockstar, so... Hopefully that comes sooner rather than later, but I thought this was a, an interesting little diversion while we wait. Thank you guys for watching. Please drop the video a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe for more GTA 6 content, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.